So that whole supercell hail wind thingy we did yesterday. Yeah, we're going to do it again today, except we're going to add in the threat for a few tornadoes. And we're also going to start it a little further west. Let's talk about today's edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. All right, good morning. It is the 12th of June, 2023, the Monday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. It was a long evening yesterday, a long night across portions of the Panhandle into the big country and central Texas. Lots of hail yesterday, baseball to softball size hail from Flower Mound all the way up to almost the north sides of Louisville. We had hail up to the size of tennis balls up to into Frisco. We've had baseball size hail across portions of the Panhandle, West Texas. Late last evening and overnight, winds over 70 miles an hour. It was a long night. Uh, as far as I know, we did not have any tornadoes. I haven't seen any evidence of such. And that was the general expectation over the last few days. A lot of hail, some wind, some heavy rain, but not much of a tornado threat. That may be changing for today as we introduce a little bit more in the way of low-level wind shear and a surface boundary that may enhance the low-level vorticity and allow for at least a bit of a tornado threat. Let's just start off with the severe weather outlook for this afternoon and this evening across the state. This is going to be from the Storm Prediction Center. The risk levels you see, level 1 through 5, green through purple, these are based on the coverage of severe storms expected within 25 miles of any given location like your home. In this case, the level 1 risk in green across most of the Panhandle into portions of Central Texas, the Brazos Valley into the Golden Triangle, and the Piney Woods of East Texas, that's about a 1 in 10 to a 1 in 20 chance of a severe storm within 25 miles of any given location like your house. Level 2 risk shown in yellow across the far northwestern Texas Panhandle up near Dalhart and then across portions of northwest Texas, the big country, the eastern Concho Valley, and a portions of Texoma, northeast Texas and east Texas. That is about a 1 in 5 to a 1 in 6 chance of a severe storm within 25 miles of any given location, like your house. And then that little orange spot there from the Storm Prediction Center. That is an enhancement. That's a level three out of five risk. That's about a one in three chance for a severe storm within 25 miles of any given location. And that just so happens to be where we are most concerned about the threat for a few tornadoes this afternoon into this evening with any sustained intense supercell that manages to intercept and ride along a warm front or boundary that's expected to be in that area of southern and southwestern North Texas into the eastern big country. Like yesterday, the most intense supercells are likely going to be capable of producing giant hail up to the size of grapefruits and softballs. Uh, baseball is two and three quarter inches in diameter. Grapefruit is four inches in diameter, and a softball is four and a half inches in diameter. Anything over the size of about three inches we classify as giant hail. So yes, giant hail did occur yesterday in Flower Mound. Giant hail is probably going to occur again today with the most intense supercells. Localized damaging straight line winds of 65 to 80 miles an hour possible, and unlike the last few days, that tornado risk has been nudged up a wee bit into the low category. Now, like the last few days, most storms today are not going to be tornadic. We're talking about a small corridor of enhanced tornado potential, mainly where that level 3 risk is. Elsewhere, main threat's going to be hail and wind, and that's going to be the most common hazard again today. Lots of big hail, strong winds, heavy rainfall with some localized flooding, but we're going to have to monitor portions of southern and southwestern North Texas into the eastern big country for the potential of a few tornadoes. Uh, this may shift a bit north, this may shift a bit south, that we're simply going to have to watch it as we get into this afternoon and evening, and trust me, we're going to be watching it. Uh, in terms of what the high-res rapid refresh looks like, let's just go ahead and take a gander. Now, as we head to this afternoon and this evening, we're going to have storms this morning across portions of the Panhandle and to central and southern Oklahoma. That's going to help push a boundary a wee bit to the south. That's what we're going to be watching for this afternoon and seeing where that sets up. Some models have that along Highway 380. Some have that along and south of Interstate 20. As we get into this afternoon, I'm going to stop this playback. Here is 1 o'clock. You can see this has a bunch of storms underway, central, southern, southeastern Oklahoma. We may even have a few skirting into northeast Texas and the Arklatex. Maybe some small hail damaging winds. As we get into about 3 o'clock, you can see still mostly quiet. Here we go, about 4 to 5 o'clock. 
we're going to have thunderstorms begin initiating along in east of a surface dry line located across the big country or a boundary. These storms, like yesterday, once they go up, they are going to get an attitude really quick and start throwing out some big chunks of ice. Uh, again, strongest storms easily going to be capable of baseball to softball size hail today. Storm motions are going to be off to the east about 25 to 30 miles an hour, just like yesterday. But we're also going to see some splitting supercells, meaning the left splits are going to move more northeast, like the storm we saw in northern Tarrant County that moved up into Flower Mound, Louisville, eventually Frisco. The right splits are going to move more south-southeast, like the storm we saw go from near Granbury all the way down to Hillsboro and Waco late last evening. And then here we go. Here's 6 o'clock. You can see this model. And now, look, we may have more storms by this point, and it may not be exactly where this model shows, but that would be one nasty supercell located near Eastland, Cisco, Breckenridge, Albany. And at this point, that storm would probably be dropping four-inch diameter hail, softballs to grapefruits, potential for damaging winds, perhaps tornadic. We'll see. As we continue on, here we go. You can see by 7 o'clock, uh, we start dealing with more supercells. 8 o'clock, trio of supercells trying to approach places like Monte County, Park or Palopino counties, all the way down into uh, Stephenville. Here is 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, you can see by this point, now if this were to happen, this would be like last night, except displaced a wee bit further to the south. Supercells galore, dropping hail all over the place, damaging winds, the potential for a few tornadoes would exist with those as well. Again, we're going to have to wait and see. This could shift south, so this could shift north. I just did that dyslexically with my hand. It's been a long night, I'm sorry. But again, uh, we're going to be busy. I think it is clear we're going to be busy later again today. Uh, here's 11 o'clock. You can see this model tries to dissipate those storms by midnight. Then we have a few more storms pop up, and it tries to bring another supercell into portions of southern DFW at 1 a.m. Let me tell you, I would not be a happy camper at that point. Uh, and then 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., you can see we've actually got more severe storms firing up with some warm air advection ongoing across central Oklahoma into portions of southern, southeastern Oklahoma. At this point, a supercell with big hail in portions of northeast Texas and the Arklatex. And then here you go at 5 a.m. Storms galore still across portions of southeastern Oklahoma and northeast Texas. Those would probably be a hail threat and not really a tornado threat. Uh, so I'll just let this animation play out again and show you. Look, we're going to have a busy day. I mean, it's been probably a good 10 to 13 years since we've had this busy of a June season in the state of Texas in terms of having to deal with day after day after day of these constant supercells. Yes, we've had severe storms in June here in the state of Texas, but usually it's the summer type storms, you know, a lot of damaging winds, maybe a squall line, not typically these supercells. And it's been a good decade at least, so uh, it can happen. Welcome to the June severe weather season in Texas. It's almost over, though. I'll talk about that here in a bit. So again, that's the general expectations as we head into this afternoon and evening. As always, keep up to date with the weather forecast because some things are going to change. All right, let's get into Tuesday because, yeah, we're not done. Potential for, hey, how about I press a button? There we go. Potential for, again, two zones of severe weather. One, northern Texas panhandle. Questionable if we get storms to initiate. If we do, we're going to probably have some problems with that. Uh, risk number two. Back in Texoma, North Texas, Northeast Texas, East Texas. So a bit further east and northeast than yesterday and today. Main question. Uh, how far west are we going to get storms to fire up? And all this is going to depend on what happens tonight into tomorrow morning, where boundaries set up and all that hoopla. And we'll talk about it more as we get into tomorrow morning. Let's just get through today first. But again, same thing goes for tomorrow. We could have supercells, uh, big hail, localized damaging winds, perhaps a brief tornado. The threat looks lower than it does for today, but let's just get through today first. Uh, and then for what it's worth on Wednesday, there's no official risk in the state of Texas right now, but we can't totally rule out one or two severe storms in North Texas, Texoma, Northeast Texas. Again, Wednesday afternoon, early Wednesday evening. If that happened, the potential for large hail and localized damaging winds Again, all right, rainfall forecast over the next three days. This runs from 7 a.m. this morning through 7 a.m. Thursday. You can see highest precipitation totals will be across the Arklatex in northeast Texas, generally one and a half to three inches of rain on average. And that's going to be with not only storms this morning, that, you know, that round of storms this morning, 
Storms tonight. Storms again Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday night. Maybe a couple on Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night. The potential certainly exists for some localized flash flooding. Lower rainfall amounts further west on Highway 82 into places like Gainesville, Wichita Falls, on average one half inch to one and a half inches of rain. Uh, about quarter inch to maybe upwards of an inch, inch and a half in the Metroplex, locally higher amounts, and then those rainfall amounts taper off the further south and southwest you go. Same thing goes for the Panhandle. Once we get through Wednesday, we're going to switch into a summer pattern completely, and that rain chances are going to mostly shut down, and it is going to get hot. I realize it's been hot the last few days across Texas, and we've been focusing on storms, and we're going to be doing that again today, but... For the fun of it, here's tomorrow's high temperature forecast. It's going to be for Tuesday. You can see, yeah, it's cooler in the panhandle, northern half of Texas. Cooler being relative because of the chance of precipitation. Southern half of Texas, oh no, it's summer. High temperatures, 103 to 108. Heat index values over 105 to 110 likely across portions of southeast Texas, all along the coast into south Texas. And we'll just keep going through it. Look, here's Wednesday, Thursday. Rain chances shut off Thursday as the upper level heat dome builds into the state of Texas. You thought it was hot now. Holy guacamole, it's going to get hot. This is 2022 level hot. Although hopefully that doesn't continue for four months straight. Otherwise, yeah, it's going to be as hot as it was last summer by late week. High temperatures ranging from about 92 in Amarillo. Not bad. 91 in Texarkana with humidity that's going to make you regret having clothes all the way up to near 110 degrees in places like Laredo, Del Rio. Uh, it's going to be hot. Heat index values add 5 to 7 degrees to that. Friday, it gets worse. Saturday, it's just as bad. Sunday, it's just as bad. So welcome to the string of triple digits. We're going to start counting the triple digit days again. That's unfortunate. And look, there may be the chance for a few storms in the panhandle if we can get lucky and get a and skirt them around that heat dome, but the rest of the state, we're going to be entrenched in this heat dome, and we're going to be in it for a while. So after tomorrow and Wednesday, chance for severe storms really drops off, and we get in the summer pattern where it's going to be hot. Not only hot during the day, but hot at night, outside the panhandle, where temperatures may stay in the 60s to low 70s at night. Rest of the state, we're going to be in the upper 70s to lower 80s at night by the weekend. So not only hot during the day, it's going to stay hot at night. Welcome to the summer of 2023, ladies and gentlemen. It is Texas. It's going to be hot for a while, but the question is, how long will it stay hot? Maybe we'll get a break. Maybe we won't. We'll see. But anyway, that is your Texas Weather Roundup for Monday, the 12th of June, 2023. We will have live severe weather coverage later this evening, most likely. We'll have some chasers out and about. Otherwise, you can keep an eye on the sky with the free Texas Storm Chasers interactive weather radar on our website, texasstormchasers.com slash radar, and in the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Have a great Monday. God bless. Keep an eye on the sky.